So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the board right now. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of what's going on, let me real quick explain what's on the board. So I've gone ahead and drawn two vectors, this red vector here and this white vector over here. So I've given some information about each of these vectors. I've gone ahead and given the components. This red vector travels four units to the right, and then it travels three units up. So I've got an x component of four and a y component of three. Using Pythagorean theorem, I was able to figure out that the magnitude was five units. And then using the arctan, I was able to figure out that the direction of this vector was 36.870. If you need a refresher on how to do that, there is a previous video telling you about the magnitude and direction of a vector. For this white vector, uh, I travel 12 units to the left, and then I travel 5 units down. So again, using Pythagorean theorem, we figured out the magnitude was 13, and then using a slightly modified version of arctan, we were able to figure out the direction was 202.620 degrees. And again, if you'd like a refresher on how we figured out that direction, because it does look a lot different, there's another video talking about the direction of vectors in any quadrant. So let's look at different ways that we can write vectors. My personal favorite way of writing vectors is to be able to graph it. Explaining these vectors graphically is perfect, because a vector is made up of a magnitude and a direction. So I can physically see the magnitude, or the length of this vector, and I can see the direction of it. But sometimes it's not always feasible to be able to draw out those vectors. So one method that we use to describe a vector is the magnitude direction form. And it's a very aptly named form, because we're going to write down the magnitude of the vector, 5 units, and then we're going to say that it's at a certain direction, which is 36.870. So what I like to do is use the at symbol, so I can say 5 units at 36. 0.870 degrees. And then we can go ahead and describe the white vector as the same thing. Again, it's the magnitude direction form. So we're going to write down 13 units at 202.620 degrees. So as you can see, magnitude direction form, very aptly named. You write down the magnitude, then you write down the direction. Then you've got the component form. The component form, again, very aptly named. So for this component form, we're going to write down the x component and then the y component. So for this red vector, our x component is 4 to the right, so it is positive 4, and 3 up. So again, to the right is positive, up is positive, so we've got positive 4, positive 3. For this white vector, though, I'm traveling 12 units to the left. Since it's to the left, we've got to put negative. Then I'm traveling 5 units down. Since we're down, we have to make sure we put a negative there. So while these two look very different, they describe the exact same vector. And each form has their benefits. So for this one, I can quickly look at it and say, here's the magnitude and here's the direction, which I can't do in component form. But in component form, I can quickly say how far to the right or to the left we need to travel, and then how far up or down we need to travel to go from that initial point to the terminal point. The linear combination form might not look too obvious right now, but it's definitely very beneficial if you get into higher levels of math, and it's also just a great way of writing things in general. In order to write the linear combination, some things that we've got to keep in mind is that a linear combination uses unit vectors. So there are two standard unit vectors that we look at when we're looking at two-dimensional vectors. The first is i-hat, sometimes uh, referenced as just a very bold-faced i, so that we know that it's a vector. And this unit vector is 1, 0. The other standard unit vector we look at is j-hat, and that represents 0, 1. So those are the standard unit vectors that are going to get us through and make sure that we're properly writing our linear combination form. So in order to do this, we say that our red vector is represented by 4i plus 3j. 
So what happens when you break this down is that this i, you're scaling the unit vector i by a factor of 4. So it becomes 4 comma 0. And then here you're scaling the j unit vector by a factor of 3. So it becomes 0 comma 3. And when you add those vectors, you'll end up with that component form. So some people may look at it and say, well, Mr. Raymond, that's just a fancy way of writing component form. And you're right, it is just a fancy way of writing component form. But in higher level maths, it end up making it a lot easier to do some operations. So let's do the same thing with this white vector. If we want it to travel 12 units to the left, then we're going to take our standard unit vector for the x direction, but this time we're going to scale it by a factor of 12, and we're going to flip it. So in order to reflect that vector, you multiply it by negative 1. And then we need to add it to our j hat, so the j standard unit vector. But again, we're going to scale it by a factor of 5. And then we're going to go ahead and reflect this one as well. So that positive becomes a negative. So it's very simple to go from component form to linear combination form. The last form we're going to look at is trig form. And trig form is going to be very beneficial if you're looking at things um, like polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are going to definitely be very, very beneficial if you're writing them in trig form, and it'll help us to be able to quickly change between one and the other. It's also just a slightly different way of writing the magnitude direction form. So trig form helps us to look at it as if it was a unit vector. So our x component is going to be the cosine of our angle, 36, 0 0.870, and our y component is the sine of that angle. So if you look at it, you might recognize that this is in fact a unit vector. So we don't want a unit vector that points in that direction. We want one with a magnitude of 5. So if you scale that trig form, you'll end up with the correct vector. So really, the trig form is going to be your magnitude for this white vector, that's 13, times the unit vector of your vector. So cosine of 202.620, comma, oh, running out of space, going to slide over just a little bit. sine of 202.620. Make sure to close that vector so I get that angle bracket in there. So there are a couple of different ways that you can write down your vector. You've got the magnitude direction form where you've got the magnitude at a certain direction. The component form will tell you the x component and the y component. Linear combination is going to be using standard unit vectors i and j and then your trig form is going to take your unit vector and it's going to scale it so you've essentially got your magnitude and your direction right there I'm going to go ahead and slide over just a little bit more so you can see that previous answer and there are actually ways to mix in the linear combination in the trig form so we could if you really wanted to rewrite this guy to be 13 cosine of 202.620 degrees, and then we can multiply that by i hat, added to 13 times the sine of 202.620, and if we multiply that by j hat, you've got kind of a mix between your trig form and your linear combination form. So you can kind of mix and max just a little bit as you go through there. But there's a brief overview of a couple of the different ways that you can write out your vectors, all meaning the exact same thing.